Okay, take out your notes then for lesson six. Here on Simeon and Anna. Show your answer some of those questions so that you had some of those thoughts there ahead of time. Okay, if you remember, God had commanded okay, way back in the uh, Old Testament. Okay, given the command that the young boys needed to be circumcised, and that was a Old Testament picture of, of God's covenant signed between his, his him and his people. Okay. So on the eighth day, according to the customary law, that's what we read here that Joseph and Mary did. Jesus was circumcised. Okay. Now again, all of the rules, all of those laws, those formal laws that were done in the Old Testament were a picture of Christ. Give me one picture in the Old Testament besides what we just spoke of that also might have pointed to Christ. What's a picture that you can think of that the people had to do and it pointed them to Christ? What was the most obvious one, the the one thing that they had to always be doing. Jesse? Yeah, take a lamb with no spot or blemish and sacrifice it on the altar of burnt offering, a picture of Christ that would die for their sins. Okay? So we see lots of those signs. So Jesus comes and he's going to be the end of all of those signs. Right? But he needs to be circumcised as well. And then we read that there was a time of purification. Okay? that Mary had after having the child, a total, if we read in uh, Leviticus there, a total of um, 40 days that she would have from the time she brought forth the child until the end of the days of her purification. Okay? And it was after those days that she could finally, her and her husband, bring their child to the temple. Okay? And so they were to bring the child there and of course, there was a sacrifice that would go along with that. That was a, a symbolism, a picture. So, now why are they bringing him to the temple? Well, every child comes from Joel. Comes from the womb. But ultimately, the gift of the child comes from God. Okay? God gives the gift of every child. Okay? So they are God's children. They're not the parents' children. They're God's children. God gives them to the parents to take care and to rear and to instruct for a time, but they're ultimately all God's children. Now, as God's children, ultimately, they should also then be spending their whole lives in the service of the Lord. Now, God specifically, in the end, set aside the Levites to do that work. Okay? So there was some symbolism that was still involved. The oldest okay, son should be required to do the work in the temple. However, God has given that duty to the Levites. So ceremoniously, parents would bring their children to the temple and redeem them from the work. Redeem them there means to take them from that work, to keep them from that work in a sense. They don't have to do that. Okay? And uh, in Numbers, we, we read the reason why. The, the child that opens the womb. So the first child to come forth from their mother's womb is one that opens the womb. And so it's their responsibility to go okay, and spend their life serving the Lord. Well, they don't have to do that because the Levites do it. But that's an attitude that we should have, okay? especially you young men. All of you should think first and foremost as you get older and you get into high school and then as you get to the end of your high school years and you're beginning to think, now what am I going to do with my life? The first thing that you should be analyzing and praying about is whether God has called you to the ministry. That would be your God's, your God's child. That's your ultimate responsibility is to serve God in the best way that you can. And one of the best ways that you could do that, young men, would be to be a minister. 
So that's the first thing you think about. I should be a pastor. I should be a minister in our churches. And that's the first thing that you should think of as your calling. And then, if the Lord directs you and moves you, you will know if that is your calling or not. If you don't know, if you're uncertain, well, there's an easy way to find out. Go to seminary. Become a seminary student, and if God doesn't want you to be, he will let you know that way. Professor Hanko used to always joke around and say, God speaks through the Greek department. Right? Greek is a difficult language to, to master. So that if, well, every young man should come to the seminary, and in his mind, those that he was saying there, if you can't make it through the Greek class, well, that's maybe God's way of saying to you, the ministry isn't for you. But anyways, that's the idea. We should all do that in some way, somehow, if the ministry is not for us, God will do that. So it's the same idea here. Every child belongs to God, and so the parents are bringing them to the temple to redeem them from that work. They don't have to do that. Okay? So after they go to the, the temple and probably do their sacrifice, okay, they do finish their duties and the customs of the law, in comes this old man, what's his name? What's this old guy's name who comes in that we read about? Garrett? Simeon. All right. Simeon comes in, and he picks up the Christ child and takes him into his arms. Now, who was Simeon? Well, he's an old gentleman, we know. Don't know much beyond that. But because he's old, what do you think he's a picture of? Here's the Christ in his arms. Christ is a new beginning for the people. So what was the old ways, Joe? Old Testament. Yeah, it was the Old Testament. Simeon is kind of a picture of the Old Testament here. Okay. Now it's time for the New Testament to come, now that Christ is here. But anyways, Simeon, we know he was just. So in other words, he, he had good godly relationships probably with, his, with the people around him, his neighbors. He was just. He was honest in his work. He was devout. In other words, he gave his life to the service of God, helping out God in some way in, in the work in the temple. And he was also waiting. We see here's waiting. He probably read the scriptures, and he knew all those old prophecies in Isaiah and in Micah and many of the other places in the Psalms of what would be and that Christ would come. So we see that there. So Simeon is here. He picks up the child, holds it in his arms, and what does he begin doing once he holds Christ in his arms? What is this? What do the scriptures tell us? Garrett? Any idea? Logan? Ah, on your desk there, Chief. Any idea? He sang sang a beautiful song. Okay, he burst into song of thanksgiving because he could see that God's salvation won't be just for the Jews, but he tells right here in the Bible it will also be for the Gentiles, for all nations, we read there in verse 32. Okay? So anyways, Christ is going to come. He, 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 he sings of that. Now also, though, he sings and he tells some other things about Christ that maybe Mary knows or, or doesn't know or maybe she knows but doesn't want to admit. But anyways, here he is and he speaks and he, he sings those beautiful words. Hey, mine eyes have seen the salvation, all that. And then he comes and he says unto Mary, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel. So that's one thing. Your child has come here and is set for the fall, so for the ungodly he's the fall, but for the rising, for God's people to be risen into heaven, that's what he's set for. And then another thing, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Obviously we know Christ will not be welcomed by everyone. In fact, many of them will be his enemies. And then a third thing, yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. We know a sword will pierce through or a spear will pierce into the side of Christ. But just as if any of you were to die, or any of your brothers and sisters, how that would hurt your mother and father. 
Well, just as a spear will pierce into the side of Christ and cause him pain and anguish, so a sword will pierce through the heart of Mary when she sees what happens to her child. So, Simeon prophesies those things. He teaches about them to Mary. Mary is pointed to. She's directed, yes, this is your new baby. This is your child. Someone you're enjoying. He's maybe at 40 days old, so he's five or six weeks old. Yes, he's smiling at you maybe already, and you're in love holding him. But don't forget, Mary, this is God's child. He has come, and he will die. Okay. And then another lady we meet in the temple. What's her name? Who else comes here in the temple? Hannah. Yes, Anna comes, and Anna comes in. We don't know much about her besides she's a prophetess. So it doesn't necessarily mean that she tells the future, but it means that she speaks God's word. So she is someone who's not afraid to let others know that she's a godly woman. She's not afraid to maybe sit down and speak to them about the things that were written in the scriptures thus far, but also maybe one who studied the scriptures well and could also know what to look for. And so... We read that she too was very old. She'd been married probably for seven years and been a widow for many more, 84. That means she could have been around 100 and some years old already. A very old, old woman. And here she's been waiting her whole life for this. She probably knew about the Christ child. She knew where to look for him. And so that is probably what she's doing here. Exciting time for her to hold the Son of God in her hands. And now both of these old Godly saint, Simeon and Anna, can probably go to their graves in peace, having seen the promised salvation that would come. And then we get the last couple of verses, speaking about Christ's life as a child. We kind of asked that question in there. What are three questions you might have about Christ being a child and God at the same time? How can he be both a human so he's going to grow. He's not going to, he's God, so he knows words, but he didn't grow and all of a sudden on day three start talking. That would be a wonder, right, Faith? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Christ grew and developed just as you do. So maybe he started walking finally around a year old, started learning his first words around two. His teeth came in and fell out just like yours did. Okay. He matured just as each of you did and will continue to do, and have done. So, did Christ go and play some soccer in the streets with his neighbors and his cousins? Okay. Did Christ go fishing, just as we did? He did those things, and there were no miraculous ways about them. He lived the life of a normal child, but there are still many questions in that brings about us. Okay. Because the way we do things, we have our own sinful flesh. Imagine being his brother and sitting in the house with him and he never talks back to mom and dad. He never disobeys their laws, their rules. He always does things perfectly. How did that all work? That's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to think about. Here's God growing up, just like you and me. But that's important later on to understand because he was man, he can die for us too then. So that's an important aspect is to realize He was man. He could also have chosen to sin, just as you and I can. Oh, here's a temptation before us. What are we going to do? Thankfully, God has given us the power through his spirit to resist those temptations, and he gave Christ that same power as well through the Holy Spirit working to resist them. And he resisted every single one of them. But he was a man. Okay. He could have been playing out in the backyard with his father's hammer, learning to be a carpenter and hit his finger just like you and I do, and bleed just like you and I do. Okay? But we can't imagine what that must have been like growing up in a household with Christ. In some ways it would have been interesting. But God doesn't tell us. It's not what's important. It's just something rather to meditate on. So, that is Christ. being circumcised, being brought to the temple to redeem him from that work. That is Christ being held in the arms of Simeon and Anna, 
Now Christ will begin to grow. We'll pick up a few other stories, some that do with John the Baptist and others of Christ growing as a young boy. You know, he's going to come back at 12 to the temple again and do some teaching. So we'll get to that there going forward. So 